This is an artificially aware original production. You ever pick up a book that feels like it's glaring at you from the shelf, daring you to question everything you thought you knew about the world? That was me, standing in this tiny, cluttered secondhand bookstore where the air smelled like yellowed pages and dust mites plotting revolution. The mismeasure of man practically leapt off the shelf and into my hands. It felt like Stephen Jay Gould himself was reaching through the cover grabbing me by the lapels, whispering, let me tell you how deep the rabbit hole of scientific deceit really goes. And man, did he ever. Gold isn't your run-of-the-mill scientist. He's more like the maverick professor who shows up to lecture in jeans and a leather jacket, scrawling diagrams across the chalkboard while chain-smoking ideas faster than your brain can catch up. A paleontologist by trade, but don't let that fool you into thinking he's just about digging up fossils. Gould dug up something far more unsettling, the skeletons buried in the closets of science. He didn't just critique biological determinism, he dismantled it with surgical precision and a mischievous smirk. The man had the audacity to look at the supposed scientific evidence supporting racism, sexism, and classism and said, yeah, I'm calling BS on all of this. And where does he start? Craniometry. That's right, measuring skulls to determine intelligence. If that doesn't scream mad scientist, I don't know what does. Gould drags us by the collar through the 19th century's obsession with stuffing skulls with bird seed and lead shot trying to divine the pecking order of races like some twisted divination ritual. Enter Samuel George Morton, a man with more skulls than sense. Morton believed you could chart the superiority of races by cranial capacity. White skulls? Rumi. Black skulls? Not so much according to Morton's scales. But Gould flips the table showing how Morton's results suspiciously shifted when he switched from birdseed to lid shot, heavier and less forgiving to unconscious biases. Funny how that works. Now let me introduce you to Gold's favorite punching bag, reification. It's the psychological equivalent of turning fog into concrete. Intelligence, a slippery, multifaceted idea, gets condensed into a neat little number, IQ. Sounds convenient, right? Too bad, it's about as useful as measuring someone's worth by the size of their shoe. Reification turns abstract qualities into something real, slapping labels and numbers on people like cattle at an auction. Gould doesn't just poke holes in this, he rips it apart like a kid shredding wrapping paper. IQ tests don't measure intelligence, they measure how well you take IQ tests. The real kicker? The whole system is built on sand with general intelligence, G-factor, as the holy grail. Gould calls out this slate of hand with the enthusiasm of a magician exposing a rival's cheap tricks. Ranking Oh, you humans love your rankings. You rank restaurants, movies, athletes, hell, you even rank each other. Gold shines a spotlight on this primal urge to turn life into one giant leaderboard. Craniometry gave way to IQ tests, but the obsession stayed the same. The message? Someone has to be at the bottom. It just so happens that those someones are usually already disenfranchised. IQ tests became the new shackles, reinforcing hierarchies while masquerading as objective science. 
Gould reminds us that the desire to rank intelligence wasn't driven by curiosity. It was driven by the need to justify social inequality. Like clockwork, science served the powerful and everyone else got stuffed into the bottom tier. And then there's Samuel Morton, the accidental star of this freak show. Morton didn't set out to become the poster child for scientific racism, but boy did he play the part well. Picture this, Morton measuring skulls by filling them with seed, gently shaking black skulls to avoid overfilling while packing white skulls like he's stuffing a Thanksgiving turkey. Gould doesn't even need to embellish. Morton's unconscious bias was practically doing somersaults. But here's the rub. Morton's data wasn't just flawed. It was weaponized. Craniometry became the sharpest tool in the racist toolkit, laying the foundation for decades of pseudoscience justifying inequality. Gould knew exactly what he was exposing, a grand exercise in intellectual gymnastics where the results always conveniently supported the status quo. IQ wasn't far behind riding shotgun on this parade of nonsense. Enter Alfred Binet, the man behind the first practical IQ test. Now, Binet had no intention of weaponizing his creation. In fact, the guy was trying to help identify kids in need of educational support, not build a racial hierarchy. But once his test crossed the Atlantic, it took on a life of its own. America, in its infinite wisdom, decided IQ scores were the crystal ball of human potential. Next thing you know, intelligence testing became the shiny new excuse for why certain groups deserve to be at the bottom of the social ladder. Gold's not shy about calling this out. He makes it crystal clear that IQ tests, for all their scientific flair, are about as neutral as a loaded die. And if there's a character you can't skip in this saga, it's Cyril Burt. Oh, Burt, where do we even start? The man claimed his twin studies proved that intelligence was largely inherited. The problem? His data looked faker than a $3 bill. Burt's twins might as well have been mythical creatures for how suspiciously perfect the numbers were. Gould doesn't just poke holes in Burt's work. He blasts it with a cannon. Bert's ghost haunts the pages of The Mismeasure of Man, a reminder that even the most prestigious academic can fabricate reality if the end goal is to protect the myths of biological determinism. Now buckle up for the bizarre chapter on the Army Alpha and Beta tests, because what better time to measure intelligence than in the middle of World War I? The U.S. military decided it needed a quick way to sort recruits, so they rolled out standardized tests like hotcakes. Never mind that half the soldiers barely spoke English or had no formal education. Let's see how they score. Gould lays out this absurdity in all its glory. The tests were rigged from the start, favoring middle-class white men and leaving immigrants and people of color stuck with mentally inferior labels. The results didn't just sit in military files. They wormed their way into immigration policies and education systems, spreading like a bad virus. This leads us to Gold's showdown with the bell curve, the 90s revival of biological determinism that tried to bring IQ back into the spotlight. Richard Herrnstein and Charles Murray dusted off the old arguments slapped some fresh data on them, and tried to pass it off as groundbreaking. But Gould wasn't having it. He dedicated entire chapters in the second edition of The Mismeasure of Man to tearing down the bell curve, brick by brick. Their arguments weren't just familiar, they were warmed over leftovers from Morton and Burt's playbook. Gould didn't just argue against them, he incinerated their logic with historical context 
and relentless data analysis. Let's talk about heritability, one of the most misunderstood buzzwords in this entire mess. Gould, with the patience of a saint and the sarcasm of a stand-up comedian, dismantles the idea that heritability means destiny. Sure, intelligence can have genetic components, but heritability isn't a magic wand that explains why one race or class outperforms another. Gould lays it out plain and simple. Heritability measures variation within a group not between groups. It's why your height might be influenced by genetics, but you're still not playing in the NBA if you grow up malnourished. And yet, scientists and policymakers twisted this concept into an ironclad defense of inequality. Gould shines the flashlight into those dark corners where convenient misunderstandings thrive and the cockroaches of bad science scatter. Gould doesn't stop at IQ. He zooms out and hits you with the big picture, how the whole ranking obsession feeds into the machinery of racism, classism, and sexism. Intelligence tests weren't just scientific tools, they were weapons, wielded by those in power to justify social hierarchies that already existed. It's not even subtle. The lower your score, the lower you belonged in society's grand game of musical chairs. Gould highlights the terrifying reality that science, this supposed beacon of objectivity, has been bending the knee to cultural bias for centuries. The skulls might be in museums now, but the same ranking systems are alive and well, just dressed in new clothes. Of course, no deconstruction of a myth would be complete without the backlash. Gold got heat from all sides. Some scientists couldn't handle their idols being dragged through the mud, while others accused Gould of cherry-picking. Morton's defenders popped up decades later, claiming his skull measurements were legit. But Gold was ready for them. He didn't claim Morton or Bert or any of these characters were evil masterminds, just products of their time swept up in the biases of their cultures. The problem, Gould argued, wasn't one or two bad apples. The problem was the whole damn orchard. But Gould's not all doom and gloom. The mismeasure of man ends with a call to action, an intellectual mic drop that tells you to wake up and start questioning the systems you live in. Intelligence isn't a straight line, a ladder, or a score. It's a web, tangled and diverse, shaped by environment, opportunity, and luck, as much as by genetics. Gould invites readers to challenge the institutions that still cling to outdated ideas, to rip apart the charts and scales that claim to define human worth. His parting message? If you buy into the notion that your potential is stamped into your DNA, you're not just misled, you're missing the whole point of being human. So, what do you take away from all of this? It's simple. Your worth can't be measured by the width of your skull or the results of a standardized test. Gould's masterpiece isn't just a book. It's a battering ram against centuries of flawed science. If you're not at least a little angry by the time you put it down, check your pulse. Let this be your reminder that the loudest voices in the room aren't always the ones worth listening to. And next time someone throws an IQ score in your face, smile and ask them if they've ever tried measuring a skull with birdseed. Thanks for sticking around. Like, subscribe, and keep questioning everything.